Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, 8744. So today, guys, we'll do an AFCON reaction to both games here. Let's start with um, Nigeria 1 and Gola 0. So it's me, 8744. So for this game, guys, Nigeria with a much better team. I think you can see this Nigeria team is starting to come alive in this tournament. They're trying to play good football. And I said this before, guys. I'm going to reiterate this point. If Nigeria wants to win this AFCON, they're going to have to make sure they keep clean sheets. Because when it comes to their attack, they simply miss too many chances. As for on goal on the day... They played a decent game. They had their few chances. I think Mabulu had a really good chance like early in the game that I believe Mabul, Nabil saved. Um, let's go look at the first half right here. Yeah, that was that close, close uh, chance right there. Yeah, in the fourth minute of the game. But yeah, you can tell that Angola just couldn't cope with Nigeria's defense. You know, them playing three at the back, Nigeria just seems very solid. And you have to give Jose Pacero a, a ton of credit because when they were trying to do the 4-2-3-1, uh, four at the back, you could see how liable they were defensively, how many mistakes they were making. And because you have another center back, it's a much diffi more difficult for Ni and goal to break them down. You know, And then obviously Nigeria scored on the breakthrough. Great, great goal that is from Lukman. Great, great cut, pa uh, great pass from uh, Moses Simon. And I believe he beats the um the um goal defender. I forgot. I think it was. I think it was uh one of the full uh, um one of the defenders. I forgot his name. Um and. He does a great challenge, you know, sweeps past the um the, the midfield, puts a nice cross in for Lukman, and it's an easy tap in. It's an easy, easy tap in, you know. And the second half man, Nigeria should have Nigeria should have buried this game. I think um uh Victor Osman had a great great chance of 15th minute of the game. That was ahead uh, he should have done better there. 35th minute. And yeah, Victor Osman, man, he's kind of having a stinker so far in the tournament. He's not having he's not been clinical enough, you know. And that's kind of the worry for if you're Nigerian is that if Victor Osman doesn't perform, how will Nigeria do? And then Botoyo had a chance in the 98th minute. And then I think there was one chance that um a goal had in the second half, and I think it hit the post. I think it hit the post. Yes, the 59th minute. Yeah, the Zinni chance I was talking about. I remember that one. Uh Lou Webo. And yeah, for Nigeria, as as you can see right here, guys, this there was a goal right there that should have that was count given, but it wasn't um ultimately it was ruled offside. I think Victor Osman scored the 70th minute. It was ruled out though. 81st minute, he should have done better there. And yeah, Sanusu, and yeah, Victor Osman, man, he should have scored from the 81st, man. That was a great, great chance. The Angola defense was completely wide. They had so much space, and they just couldn't finish, you know? Um, Moises Suman right there. Um, and so for Nigeria, as I said, man, Victor Osman, as I said, there is a chance for them to win this trophy. I think they have a good chance. It's just that they need Victor Osman to perform, you know? And But, I mean, you know, if, if Lukman's doing the job, he's done a fantastic job. Once again, shout out to Bassi. Bassi has been fantastic in the center-back partnership. He's done great. But he's in Trusta Kong has done a good job. Bianco, Awubi, Sanusu, I didn't think have a, had a great game. I thought he was one of the, um, the mad players in the day. And he was a Simon Lukman on Osaman. So, yeah, for Nigeria, man, as I said, man, I think if Osaman could start firing and be clinical for Nigeria, I think Nigeria are probably the favorites. But remember, though, um, you know, we, we still have the semifinal to go in the final, and we still have Ivory Coast left. Because for me, it's between Ivory Coast and Nigeria, the, the, the two strongest teams left in the competition. As for Angola, as I said, they just couldn't get on. They just couldn't. It just wasn't their day. I think um, Angola really struggled to break down this Nigerian defense. So you could see how tough and resolute it was. And, you know, as for Angola, we know this is a team that doesn't concede a lot of goals. They're pretty defensively solid. They don't concede a lot. And so it was always going to be a t uphill task for them to, you know, obviously score a goal against this Nigerian defense. And so, yeah, Nigeria, man, they win 1 0. They're through to the semifinals. And, of course, we'll be playing the winner of, I believe it's Cape Verde or South Africa. We'll find out. We'll find that out tomorrow. Moving on to the other game we got here, it is DR Congo 3, Guinea 1. DR Congo, man. I underestimated this team significantly. I said this is a team that wouldn't do so well in the tournament. I think I predicted them third in the group, and they're in the quarterfinals, man. Uh, sorry, they're in the semifinals. And they finally win a game. Finally, finally gets a huge, huge win. Uh, Guinea on for me on the day were pretty disappointing. I was really, really disappointed in Guinea. Now, I'm glad to see that um, Nabi Keita did start this game. You could see that he did switch to a new formation, 4-4-2. But you could tell that Guinea just uh, just were really, really underwhelming of the day. They got a very, very soft penalty, and Baba gave away a penalty. For me, that shouldn't have been a penalty. I don't really agree with the decision. Anyways, Bayo steps up and scores in the 20th minute of the game to make it 1-0. Then, Mbemba, a few minutes later, after giving away the penalty, makes up for it, was scoring a wonderful goal from the corner. And um, he scores a fantastic goal. Then, in the second half, uh, a penalty was given for... A uh, penalty was given, I believe... I forgot who won the penalty. Um, I think it was given away by uh, Genevieve. Um, and let me see if I can find it here in the ticker. If we could see right here. Uh, key events. Let me just check. Who won the penalty? Yeah. And then Wisa steps up and converts the penalty. 
Uh, then the third goal was scored by Masako. Great, great goal from the set piece there. Um, the Guinea goalkeeper, Khan, should have done better there. He was completely out of his net, and he should have done better and sweeps it in. Yeah, but Guinea, as I said, man, they just didn't create enough. Uh, they did have some decent chances in the second half. They did force um, someone. I think Rossi had a chance in the 89th minute, if I remember correctly. But you can tell this attack is just not good enough. This Guinea team, they play well as a unit, but their attack is what worries me a lot. And yeah, for Adiro Congo, man, they deserve the win. Yeah, you can see right there. Free, nice, nice free kick there. Goal there right there. Uh, we still there right there with the miss. And yeah, Adiro Congo was just a better team, man. They were just a better team. Uh, fully deserved this win. And for Guinea, as I said, they were just underwhelming, man. They were very, very underwhelming. Once again, man, Gurasi doesn't start. I don't really know why Gurasi doesn't start. I feel like Gurasi and Bayo should be the partnership up front. Obviously, I know Gurasi wasn't really fit, but you gotta give him a go, man. Like, he only played, like, a good substantial amount against Senegal. And that was a game in which uh, Senegal were basically, you know, like, that's the only game he really, really played in that had a good chunk, you know, and it's just a really unfortunate because I thought Gurasi would expose this tournament. I thought he would have a fantastic tournament for for um, Guinea, but it just shows that how club form, international form is very different. Just because you perform well for your club doesn't mean you're going to perform well for your country. So uh, very disappointing for Guinea, but hey, they made the quarterfinals. I think that's a pretty good achievement for them. And um, yeah, I think this is potentially very because I believe in the last edition, they went on the round of 16. And obviously, DR Congo, I don't think they qualified for the last edition. So uh, yeah, for DR uh, Guinea men, I think things to work on is that they need to work on having a uh, better, uh, they got to work on... Um, be more clinical in front of goal, and they got to make use of possession because, yeah, they had 62% possession, but they didn't really do much for the possession, you know. And as for DR Congo, very, very dominant win, very, very good win, but I just need to see Bakambu bench. Bakambu for me is simply a liability. I don't know what Sebastian Deserbi is going to do. Why does he keep starting him? Bonza should start, and you can see that Bakambu is just a liability. Bakambu is a liability. So if DR Congo really wants to win this tournament, I don't think Bakambu can start. So if we see the winner of this plays against either Mali or Ivory Coast, we'll find that out tomorrow. And so, yeah, man, I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this review, guys. Uh, let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. If there's any major talking points, please let me know. And, um, yeah, like I said, guys, please remember to like and subscribe. Check out me in the post description below. Make sure to click that join button to get access to members' videos, members' streams. And, yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.